about yourself? Um, well, my name is Kondwani Jovanda. I come from Zambia and I am a climate ambassador. I came for the Children's Climate Forum, which took place last week in Copenhagen, um, where children from about 44 countries, 164 delegates in total, came um, to meet together to uh, share their climate change stories, come up with recommendations for leaders, and basically discuss what can be done next and what the children's voice is representing all children of the world. What is it like to be an ambassador, a uh, children ambassador for climate? Um, well, I think it's a great honor because um, it's nice to have uh, to be here representing the children of Zambia and not only the children of Zambia but the children of the world. Um, there are a whole lot of children who didn't get the opportunity to come to Copenhagen and have their voices said, um, but all of the children who did come, the 164 delegates, um, basically represented everybody from there and had their voices heard as well. And so we're, it's, I, I, it makes me feel proud to be a, a climate ambassador because I now have the power to talk to people who are at a higher level and to have the children's voices heard by not only the people who are just here, but by the people there, the decision makers, the people in whose hands our future lays. So it really is an honor. So as uh, an ambassador, what exactly did you do in Copenhagen? What have you done? Well, at the Children's Climate Forum, we attended a whole lot of workshops um, in, for mitigation and adaptation, where um, we were divided around topics that were centered around climate change, like biodiversity, water and sanitation, deserts and uh, droughts, um, renewable energy sources, etc. And so everybody was in their respective workshop um, talking about the respective topic and coming up with recommendations and what can be done by the children and what can be done by the government of the countries that they come from and, and how um, certain things can be implemented which would re uh, reduce carbon emission and which would make things a whole lot better for the climate. Um, um, and one, o one other thing that we did is we tried as, uh, as climate ambassadors to say that we won't only depend on the government to do things because it may take a whole lot of time. So we also came up with a whole lot of ideas under mitigation and adaptation um, to do things ourselves, to go back to our communities and start projects and sort of get the message out there ourselves with what we have and with the support that we have from organizations like UNICEF and um, our Ministry of Environment. But mainly the, the message that we're trying to do is what can we do ourselves now? What can we start doing? And so... Um, a word to the African youth. If you had to speak to the African youth, uh, what would you tell them right now? Well, I would tell them a very simple message. Let's go talk to our leaders. That's the only thing that is, 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 is remaining right now. Um, something else that I would tell them is that uh, global warming, climate change may look like big issues which we can't tackle, but then there is hope. We can tackle them. You may be planting just one tree, but that one tree will give so much oxygen. It will save the environment. So let's not be discouraged by saying that, oh no, we can't do this, it's such a big job. It is such a big job, but if we start taking a step today, we can definitely ensure that 50 years, 60 years from now, you'll see the, 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 the results and the consequences of what you have done, and you'll see that it's actually a really positive thing. So I'll tell them to always stay positive, and if their leaders do not listen, they sh that should not discourage them. They should still go on and do as much as they can for the climate. Yes, we can! Yes, we must!